So the other important thing that you have to do is do a staff check-in. Let's be realistic, realistic. You will have staff that are not ready to return to work for a number of reasons. But now that you have a sense of how many children by age will be returning and when, you can plan how many staff you will need. Again, staff need to know what the game plan is, what the expectation will be, and how you plan to keep them as well as the children as safe as possible. Let's face it, in the end, you might even have to hire new staff. So one of the things that I think we need to do a check-in on is how staff are feeling. This is something that I do in my own agency. Uh, on one to 10, how are you feeling today? Are you feeling good? Are there some challenges? Are you anxious? And what I found is that staff absolutely uh, like being able to check in because they have an opportunity to share their feelings and their thoughts and their concerns. So that's the first thing. How is your staff feeling and what do they need to feel that to need to feel the best about returning to work? And then what staff members are ready to return now and how many staff members do you need? I know that all of you want your staff and your program to be successful. And there are at least four areas I want to bring to your attention today to help you and your team to be successful. The first is mental health services. Uh, whether you want to admit it or not, we have all been emotionally traumatized by this pandemic and other things that are going on in our society. Please identify a mental health provider that staff can access to help them cope and address any concerns they might have. Again, conduct initial check-ins, and then once you're open, at least do check-ins once a week with your team. Talk to them about what they need to function better. Uh, one resource is Jerry Costa at the Montclair State University Center for Autism, uh, and we're going to post this information, and there are other uh, agencies throughout the state that are also providing free mental health services and group counseling. So just want to bring that to your attention. The second area is professional development. Yesterday, Assistant Commissioner Natasha Johnson from DFD mentioned that there would be some short videos on hand washing, sanitizing, and other relevant topics. My colleagues and I at the local CCRNRs are available to assist you with some of your training requests as well, and I ask that you reach out to your R&R. If you have staff that have not participated in the required health and safety training, I urge you to have them to sign up for that training right away. And then lastly, there are child care health consultants in the state of New Jersey that are poised and ready to provide assistance uh, with staff development and other services if you need them. So please reach out to these uh, groups. The third thing is PPE supplies. So we know we need gloves and face masks and booties and smocks and thermometers and completing supplies. You're staff must have those things to work well and to be safe. So you have to focus on purchasing those supplies as soon as possible. And then lastly, new policies and procedures. There needs to be a thorough understanding of what the OOL requirements are and how to implement them effectively. And I just want to reiterate, OOL is there to support you. Uh, and explain things as necessary. So let's use that, that resource of the inspectors to help you uh, figure out how you can implement these new policies and procedures. So at this time, I want to ask Stephanie to share um, some information about staffing. Um, so we're talking about staffing. Um, and I wanted to share uh, that the center that I run um, is generally licensed for 137. And um, usually our operating is around a 115 due to NACI and group size um, ratios. Uh, right now we've been running emergency childcare with about 40 children and uh, expected for June 15th will be around 70 children. So that will be seven individual groups um, 
we have one classroom that we're not going to open because it's a very physically small classroom and we don't feel like we can do physically distance, uh, physical distin distancing in there in a safe way. Um, we are in the pre COVID days, we would have um, about four teachers open with us at 7 a.m., which is our operating hours are 7 to 6 with extended day till 645. Um, we generally have four staff, maybe three teachers and one administrator. Um, moving forward, we're going to have between 10 and 11 staff people at 7 o'clock. And that is because um, each room is going to have one teacher because you cannot combine rooms at the start or the end of the day. Um, we are going to need two people out at the front receiving children outside of our building um, and then at least one if not two individual teacher you know teachers in addition to classroom staff running the children from the front of the building um, to their classroom um, I did see a question come up about parents and other visitors in the building uh, the guidelines read are, are no parents no visitors in the building um, so a couple of things that you, you really have to, to think about, um, obviously go through that checklist that your licensor sent you, um, go through um, the health and safety requirements from May 29th, and really double check um, that you're following all of the protocol as you create your staff schedule. Um, but you definitely need to consider um, that groups cannot combine at the start of the end of the day. Um, because of that, we are not offering uh, extended day at my program. Um, and teachers cannot be shared. That was one of the questions that came up. So if you have a teacher who generally um, works in a, uh, you know, breaks the infant room from 12 to three every day and then spends the remainder of the day in a toddler classroom because somebody leaves at three, um, you can't do that anymore. Um, even if you're washing hands, it's just not, um, according to the regs, that's not something that we're able to do. Um, so breaking, so, you know, breaking your teachers, um, a couple, there've been quite a few questions about masks in the chat box that I, I can't address because we're not licensing. Um, but I will tell you that you might have to consider instead of a one hour break in the middle of the day, um, four 15 minute breaks. Um, so a lot of people have been asking about going outside and what that looks like. And maybe you need to build some of that into your day. Um, the use of floaters um, is something that, uh, you know, I'm sure we all, we all want floaters, right? Um, as many as we can have, but in this situation, we have to be really cognizant um, because they want to be able to backtrack should there be potential, you know, exposure or a positive case. Um, somebody asked about ratios. The ratios are 10 children. Um, there are not requirements on how many adults can be in that classroom. In terms of ratios, obviously, um, our regular operating license um, ratios do stand true in this situation. Um, so if you've got um, you know, for, for a, an infant room of a one to four ratio, if you can only have 10 infants, then you need three staff people. Um, I mentioned no visitors in the building. Um, somebody asked about therapists. Yeah, that includes therapists. Right now, the only adults who can be in the building outside of your staff are um, Office of Licensing and Emergency Personnel. Um, and that includes uh, volunteers as well. So any kind of special events or volunteers that you would be um, running to help support your program, um, we have to put that on the back burner right now. Um, I, you know, I mentioned about um, how many staff people that my program is needing right now to run throughout the course of the day. And it, it's a challenging puzzle to piece together, but we certainly are looking at um, more you know, we're long gone are the days of traditional eight hour shifts, unless your center is running just for eight hours every day. Um, so we're looking at being a little bit more creative to ensure that groups, um, you know, are, are covered um, with appropriate uh, ratios for sure. Um, I, I see some questions in the chat box that are pertinent to what I'm saying. So I am going to try to address them. Um, you can have one teacher in a room, yes, um, if you are in you know, an age group that only has, or that only has the need for one, one teacher in the classroom. Um, but if you don't have bathrooms in the classroom um, and you don't have just one person who's gonna break that room when that teacher needs a break, um, you have to be really cognizant of uh, potential cross-contamination. That's really where these, this protocol has come from. Um, so, so the things that I would urge everybody as you consider reopening um, you know, is to create a mock building. Take, let's say you've got five classrooms, you've got 10 classrooms, however many classrooms you're going to open, know that the max is that you're going to have 10 kids in that classroom. And then try to fi figure out how many staff you're going to need day to day. And if your, your hours are more than eight hours a day, you got to figure out how you're going to cut that without using um, a staff person in more than one room. Um, for, for us, I, for me, I've been using a combination of an Excel spreadsheet and an enormous whiteboard that I just move sticky notes from one place to the next. Um, and knowing, uh, the, I think the big positive for me as we reopen, uh, yes, we are gonna need more staff than we've needed in the past, 
um, but I think about the positive as how many staff we get to, to give their jobs back, um, and also how many um, parents and families we're affecting by, by providing quality, um, consistent care for all of our, all of our families. Uh, early childhood educators know that children learn best in small group and one-on-one -on -one experiences where they build relationships with their caregivers. So it kind of took a pandemic for us to get what we wanted. Yes, it's, there's going to be some growing pains and we're all going to have to work together to figure this out. Thank you.